Hey girls, Kaylee here. Today we have a braiding encyclopedia covering every basic braid you need to follow my tutorials or create your own hairstyle. And because this is an encyclopedia, I'm going to use my professor glasses. Alright, this is going to be a long one, so I hope you brought your coffee. This encyclopedia is going to cover a French braid, a Dutch braid, a facial braid, a rope braid, a round four strand braid, and a five strand braid. Alright class, we're going to begin with the basic French braid. Now I'm going to demonstrate on the side of my hair because I find that much easier to demonstrate and to film. So this is how we are going to do this. This is what I get requested the most to do a tutorial on because it's very hard to catch on to. We really, really, really have to practice this. I will tell you the steps, but quite honestly, it is going to take you using your hands on your hair and practicing until you are blue in the face or arms and then you have it. Basically, a French braid is taking a normal braid and incorporating new hair each time you braid a section over. That's the easiest way for me to think about it, but I will split it down into four steps. And what I like to do is I like to pick a section right in the middle of where I'm going to braid. That's going to be from here to here. So this is my middle section of that. You split it into three, just like you would for a normal braid. What I like to do to start off is to braid over a couple times. That's not necessary. But now that you've done that, you are ready for step one. Step one is to pick up the hair that you're going to incorporate into the braid. Now you can choose to either pick a small section from the outside of the area that you're French braiding, which would look like this, or you can pick up an entire section of hair by sliding your finger along and picking up all the hair at that level, just like that. That's what I'm going to do for the purpose of this demonstration. Picking up the entire level of hair is going to give a smoother look to the braid. If you want a very piecey look, you can just pick small sections from the outside and braid them over. All right, step one is that you will pick up all the hair on that level and incorporate it with this little section on the outside. Step two, you will braid it over, just like so. Step three, pick up some more hair from the outside and incorporate it with the outside section of the braid. Step four, braid it over. And then you'll repeat. Step one, pick it up. Step two, braid it over. Step three, pick up the hair. Step four, braid it over. And continue those steps all the way down the section of hair that you're looking to braid. What's key when you're doing a French braid is to keep your hands as close to your head as possible. What I see a lot of people do is they braid really far away from their head, but they want the braid to be against their head. There's just no way to go from braiding all the way out here to having a braid that's nice and flush against your head. So you have to hold your hands there and hold very, very tightly. And this is the finished product. Now for the Dutch braid. A Dutch braid is basically the same thing as a French braid, except you're braiding in an opposite direction. When you are braiding with a French braid, your hair is braiding over like so. Each time you put a new section into the braid, it goes over the other ones, just like I'm doing right now, all right? When you're doing a Dutch braid, it's going under. So instead of going like this, I'm going underneath. Each outside section goes under the one next to it, and that is how you're going to create the Dutch braid as opposed to a French braid. It's the exact same steps, the only thing that changes is the direction of braiding. So with that in mind, we start as we did with the French braid, picking up a small section right in the middle of the section you wish to braid. You split it into three, and now as with the French braid, your first step will be to incorporate hair. Now you can either incorporate it by choosing a small section from the outside, just like so, or by picking up an entire level or layer of hair, which is what I'm going to do for the purpose of this demonstration. So pick up your layer and incorporate it into the outside section of the braid. So this is step one. Step two, you're going to braid it under the section next to it. Step three, pick up hair on the other side. Step four, braid it under. Step one, pick up the hair. Step two, braid it under. Step three, pick up the hair. Step four, braid it under and continue that throughout the section that you wish to Dutch braid. And now we will move on to the fishtail braid. The fishtail braid requires two sections of hair, like so. The basic premise is that you're going to switch little pieces of hair from one section to the other. This can be done in four steps. Step one is going to be to remove the small section of hair. Step two will be to transfer that section of hair to the other side. Small section of hair, 
over to the other side and small section of here to the other side or if you want to think about it in the steps step one step two step three step four just like so and you will repeat this all the way down this can be one of the more time-consuming braids but in the end it looks pretty awesome a good tip with a fishtail braid is to use very small sections when you braid over. That will accentuate the shape of the fishtail braid and help it to look much different than a normal braid. Another helpful tip is to choose pieces of hair from the outside of each section. That way they have to go all the way around the braid and it makes it look much more fishtail-like. And here's the finished braid. And now we will move on to the rope braid, which also requires two sections of hair. The basic premise of a rope braid is that you're going to twist both sections of hair one direction and then wrap them in another. This can be done either by twisting all the way down the hair and then wrapping, or twisting as you wrap. I will demonstrate both methods. That didn't sound nerdy. I'll begin by showing you how to twist all the way down both sections and then wrap them. I'm going to twist each section away from my face and then I will wrap them towards my face. Alright, so twisting all the way down your hair like this is a good method if you have shorter hair, but if you have longer hair like me, it might be a little bit difficult to twist all the way down each section. But I wanted to show you guys how to do it. So here it is twisted. Now I twisted it away from my face, so now I'm going to wrap them towards my face. So I'm just going to hold them as tightly at the end as I can as I wrap them. And then secure it at the end, and you have a rope braid. Alright, now for what I consider to be the vastly easier method. You split your hair into two, and then you begin by just doing a wrap for a couple of inches. Because you want to go ahead and get it started. Like so. So I've twisted it this way, and my hands are going to continue to twist this way as I wrap. But I'm going to be wrapping in this direction because you have to twist and wrap in opposite directions. It's a little bit of a mind bender. Don't think through it too much. Just do it. Alright, so I'm going to wrap this way, and as I wrap, I'm going to twist my hands this way. So wrap and twist, just like that. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you kind of get it into your body, it happens really easily and really, really quickly. So twist and wrap. You want to have a good hold on your hair as you do this, because if you let go, it's going gonna, it's gonna to all unravel. And once it gets to the end, take a little scrunchie, and voila! All right, now we're getting into the difficult stuff. I'm going to go with a round four strand braid. I really like the look of this. It can be a little bit difficult to master at first, but we're just going to break this down and make it really simple. So you're going to begin with four strands of hair. One thing you can do to make this a little bit easier is to separate each of the four strands using little rubber bands. That way the four strands will stay completely separate as you learn your braid. Obviously this is not something that you're going to want to do when you're actually doing the braid for a look, but if you're just wanting to practice, just to get a little bit of a feeling of it, this is going to be very helpful. Step one is going to be to take the very outside piece of hair, bring it underneath the two next to it, and put it next to this outside piece of hair. So let me repeat that. Step one, take an outside piece of hair, bring it under the two next to it, and right to this position. At step two, you will switch it with the hair next to it. So these two are going to switch places. Just like so. And then you'll move on to step three, which is to take this outside piece of hair, bring it underneath the two next to it, and place it next to the other outside piece of hair. Step four, switch it with the one next to it. Then you'll repeat from the beginning. Step one, Take the outside piece of hair and bring it underneath the two next to it. Step two, switch the places. Step three, take the other outside piece of hair underneath the two next to it. Step four, braid it over. And then you continue. Step one, take the outside piece of hair underneath the two next to it. Like so. Step two, braid it over. Step three, take this outside piece of hair underneath the two next to it. Step four, switch it with the section next to it. And continue. And that is the end product. And finally, we'll do our five strand braid, which uses five strands of hair. For the purpose of this tutorial, I have already applied my rubber bands to make this easier for your viewing pleasure. If you're just learning this braid, I do recommend something like this because it does help you to keep each section separate as you're learning this braid. 
As with many of our previous braids, this one also includes four steps. It's going to be a lot like weaving, so if you've ever done that before, that will help you right now. But you're going to start with the very outside section, and step one is to twist it underneath the section next to it. Step two is to go over the section next to that. So just think under over, just like so. Step three, you're going to go back to the other outside section, put it underneath the section next to it. Step four, braid it under or over the section next to that. Step one, underneath the section. Step two, take that section right underneath the section next to that. Step three, take this section under the section next to it. Step four, over the section next to that. And you continue using those steps. Step one, under the section next to it. Step two, over the section next to that. Step three, under the section next to it. Step four, over the section next to that. Continuously keep these steps in your mind as you're braiding. It will really help you in the long run because it can get very confusing with braids like this. And this class is the final product. Alright class, I hope you've enjoyed this braiding encyclopedia and I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you on Monday.